Well, so obviously there was another Premier Division game on Friday night, and um, I'm going to be completely honest, I didn't actually, we are recording this on Sunday morning, and I didn't actually check the score until Sunday morning, and I kind of entirely forgot that that one was on. Um, I think a lot of people did with the European games being on, and there's more games being played today, obviously Sligo are playing, Pats are playing, Cork are playing, like, there's a lot of games on today. Yeah, Cork, um, Pats and Sligo are there. Yeah. So we'll kind of just quickly brush over Drogheda's two 0 loss to Finn Harps. Um, big win for Harps. Yeah, you Open Drogheda was Danny Morrissey yeah, and yeah. Eddie Dazane with the goals. Yeah, it was important for them. Like uh, both teams are kind of I think going through like a little bit of patchy spells. Drogheda seems to be in a little bit of disarray. Players like leaving Gareth McCaffrey earlier on in the season. Now Killian Brennan and a couple of others. Uh, yeah. They brought Sean Russell in today, so that might breed a little bit of air. Like I, th- I think. Things seem to have gone a little bit stale there. Yeah. Um, it, it just seems that way, you know. It, it's probably, I'm sure there's a lot of bad vibes and that. Ever since the big defeat to Dundalk a couple of weeks ago in the now Derby, it, it just doesn't seem to be going well for Jordan at all at the minute. Um, then obviously with UCD at times, you kind of you were down that end of the league and stuff like that mm. and kind of struggling. Um, what's it like to be in a dressing room where things just aren't going right? Um. Well, depend. UCD is very different to anywhere else. Um, you see, because you have no expectations, and most of your players have little or no experience of league. Yeah. So when I came into the league, we were obviously fighting relegation. But when you do get a result, and Josh, you know, so Josh was around it. When yeah. you do get a result, it's a lot bigger when you're at UCD than any other club I've been to. Yeah. When now when we win a game, it unless it's obviously if we beat one of the big boys. Yeah. It's kind of just done and move on to the next one where I used to be, I remember just lads were just buzzing for days yeah, and even yeah. but obviously next game comes around and you can lose 5-0 to Derry up in and yeah. you just know, it just, yeah, it's just it's just it's different from a week makes in football it's amazing like, um, but I think it's just yeah when you're down that band, like, it's just everything always seems to go against you yeah. and I know my first year at Limerick obviously we didn't win for 20 something yeah. games and then all of a sudden we won I think it was eight or nine out of the he last went t- twelve. On a mad run. For yeah. Um, the the so I don't. And even that, I, I remember. I remember doing. People asking me what, it's what clicked, on. or what happened, what made a difference. And I, t- I, it purely was based on getting that first win. And I yeah. think we brought it. Martin brought in one or two players, but I don't think that made a difference. Usually, like, I think we yeah. brought in Sean Kelly right back, and we brought in, who was it, Paddy Canuka centre half. Yeah. And then obviously Vinny Fatty just. Yeah. Started banging them in, yeah, and then <laughs> yeah. So I don't know. I don't know. It's a it's a funny thing. Like when you're at down the bottom of the league, it's it's a huge thing. Every game is just another opportunity. Yeah. And then it's it's horrible feeling is when say you tire the game and you think right we're gonna get something out of this yeah, and you look a, at the potential need a big win here. where you could be in the league and stuff. And then if it doesn't go to plan, it's it is it's heartbreaking because you put. Yeah. I know when fans come and they see it, but at the end of the day, the players are working towards us all week. Yeah, and this is your job, like so. You're thinking, right? Everything going in this, it's all, kind of is all eggs in one basket thing, and then it is. It really is hard to take when you things go, don't go to plan. But vice versa, when it does, it's an unbelievable feeling. Yeah, what have you made of Bow Harps and Drogheda this season when you've come up against them? Um, well, Drogheda, we've beat them there. We beat them three 0 at home and two 0 away, and to be honest, like I, when we played them the first time, I remember thinking these are going down. Just yeah. I didn't see anything, no, no spark about them. Yeah. The lads, I know, I think they did have an all right dress room at the time. I think they all got on well. Yeah. But I saw a completely different thing there last week when we played them, beat them 2-0. They just, they were just arguing with each other. They had no, no real kind of character jumping out in terms of they yeah, wanted to win. No kind of, no leader really stepping up on my yeah, people I mean, are arguing with each other. Yeah, I likes to killing Brennan. Gav Brennan's not playing. They're experienced players that aren't kind of there around in the dress room. Um, and I think they would have pinpointed Finn Harf's game as a must win for them. Yeah. Um, and I can just see them dropping more and more and more because unless they do have a huge turnaround, yeah. I don't know where it's going to come from, but I can't see it ending too well for them just because based on what I've seen them from. Yeah. Josh, then with Harps, obviously, kind of Ollie Horgan is there and he seems to maybe at, time, maybe at times, and I've seen it with them, they seem a little bit naive tactically sometimes, but. My God, does he get some heart into a group of players up there at times and get them up for games? Like he seems like a man who just he loves the group of players he has there. And how important is that for a team who are down that end of the league? 
I'm an absolute huge fan of Harps, a huge fan of Ollie, Ollie Horgan, always have been. Uh, I know the football might be the prettiest to watch at times, but when Finn Park, I know it doesn't happen often, but when that's packed, yeah. when Ollie Horgan has them up for it, they they will literally go out and die for that club. Like I know yeah. it's a cliche in football, but they're the one team I've seen that will, will just not stop doing anything for each other. Been involved in promotion races against them, so it's horrible to go up there yeah. and play them. Yeah. But my God, are they brilliant? And at this stage, I'd, I'd be fairly confident that they're going to stay up. Yeah. In that, the well, when you're in that scenario, like when you're down and kind of in a relegation scrap as such, like Harps are, how is it actually more important to have that type of figure in there, whether it's a player or a manager or just someone around yeah. the club, to kind of just motivate you and get you up and make you really feel like this is more important than just the 11 lads out on the pitch and stuff? Yeah, I don't know. Like, Finn Harps are a funny one because they have, I think, what no one else in the ha- league has, and yeah. that is a home fixture that every single player in the league hates. Yeah. And I know myself, like we went up there for the playoff two years ago with Limerick. And you're walking out and it's like a cow shed on the side and the pitch yeah. was horrific and then the fans are so close to you and they're loud, like, yeah. they're in fairness, they're good fans, like when it's packed out, like Josh said, it's unbelievable when it is because there's yeah. something like 3,000 there, yeah. three or 4,000 we were there for the playoff. There's literally not a square inch left. And uh, I don't know, like even we played them again this year and it's just the way he sets out a team to play against and in fairness, he does his homework. I see him at games every second week. Yeah. Um, and they can play as well. They'd be threatening. Yeah, when they, they want to, they play. And they have yeah. some good players. I like, guess yeah, just got, got Paddy McCourt there, who's one of the most talented yeah. footballers to ever play in this league when yeah. he wants to. <laughs> um, and I think he brings in like they have obviously a limited budget, but he manages to always kind of pluck up a player. Um, yeah. decent players like the likes of Michael Connor went up there. Danny yeah. Marcy went all the way from Cork. Like yeah. they're not bad players by any means. Um, yeah. and I think it's just he 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 has a, we actually funny enough in the house I live I live with few lads and we all um refer to him as God. Yeah. Just because he's just he's just a character like yeah and um, like even the tactics sets out. I remember we played them one day and whatever way we had set out, he had pinpointed the two. Whatever way he played, we had a game and I looked at him. And they had a two at the back with one kind of sitting in front of him. Yeah, they had wing backs, but they didn't go forward obviously. They just and I was playing the left wing that day and they just man marked the two wingers. They yeah. the fella in front just man marked. I mean, if you were trying to get away, they were. Holding you say, and yeah. they just wouldn't let you didn't get an inch like, yeah. And it was just he obviously sets them up and he goes game by game. And I don't think he'd ever go and kind of stick to one tactic every week. Well, there's yeah. not a chance he does. Well, because they actually, of um, I watched them, they're on TV against Dundalk a few about six weeks back or so, and they played really well in the first half. And they played a similar enough formation where they had like two lads at the back, one fella sitting in front of it mm. trying to pick up McElhenney, the two wing backs kind of pushed up right on the wingers, and then just flood. The midfield yeah. area with basically everyone else, and probably play off set pieces. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. But if it's effective because, like, I think he is. He must have one. Small, I don't know what his budget wise, but he must find a hard yeah, to track. I think they do have the smallest budget yeah. in the Premier Division, and he must obviously find he a hard. Yeah, and he has to find a hard to track players up there because it's just it's a long way for most a majority of players based in Ireland. So. Yeah, the like only kind of the only kind of job. part of the country you'd really see lads who you could go right, we could recruit them as maybe lads who aren't really getting in at Sligo or lads who aren't getting in at Derry maybe. Yeah. But other than that, I say Danny Morrissey going up from Cork and stuff like that. That's and, a novelty. I'd love to know how that one's yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and um <laughs> Kieran O'Connor going up from Dundalk, obviously he's, he's gone to Bowles Yeah, now, he's yeah. gone to Bowles yeah. now for the second half of the season, which will be a loss for him in the second half of the season because he's their top scorer. But, um, yeah, for him to be able to attract players, there must be something about him. Um, so, we'll move on to the next kind of point we have, and that's Bray. And they've been saved for what seems like the 15th season in a row now where they've nearly gone out of business. As a player and as a player in the league, would what's happened to Bray this year and what kind of seems to consistently happen with mm-hmm. Bray put you off ever kind of going near that club as a player, even though to you it's quite local to where you are and where you're from? Well, you know, it's, it's a horrible situation for any player because yeah. I know for a fact those boys have been told obviously this week, oh, look, everything's okay. But a week ago they had no idea that it was coming or that anyway they were going to be financially stable for the rest of the season because they were all 100% sure that that was... I was going yeah. to roll out for the rest of the season. Yeah, um, Josh, obviously we did a video about it uh, on Monday, myself and Cormac and that. Um, it was, at that point, looked like it was done and that yeah. was it, dead and buried. 
but now they seem to have been saved again. I know you have strong enough feelings on it. Um, do you think this is obviously for the players and the staff? It's a great thing because they still have a place to go to work tomorrow. But as someone involved in the league, do you think this is kind of maybe once too many for Bray and one too many chances? It's, it's really disappointing. It's it's disheartening when you're actually involved with the league and you know you're, you're, you're trying to do work around around another club. It just means you're just thinking. Are there a lot of people in this league and involved in the administration and stuff that aren't doing their jobs right? Why should I bother? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's it is really disheartening that like a club like right like I haven't had any dealings with this great club by now, the last Bray Pat Devlin stuff, great club. Yeah. Brilliant people to work with. But it it really is. It's it's almost That's the political answer because you're working for Pat now. That's exactly <laughs> what that is. <laughs> yeah, he definitely didn't pay me to say that or anything, yeah. but uh, <laughs> No, it is it's it, it it's really disheartening because, as I said, we need to have a league where everything's transparent, everyone knows what each other's doing. Not, not paying players an absurd amount of money a week for the League of Ireland and not actually being 100% sure that you're going to pay, be able to pay this from week 1 to week 52. Yeah. Um, would that be the most important part? Well, maybe not the most important part when you're choosing a club for yourself, so say when you were leaving Rovers. Mm. If you had an offer of two or three different clubs, say, and one was Limerick and maybe one was Bray and somewhere else, that you look at it and go, right, well, they're all Premier Division clubs, they're all around a similar level, so which one for me is the most financially stable one where I feel like I could go there for the year and I'm not yeah. going to have to worry about not being paid? Well, funny enough, I had that decision at the start of the year between Bray yeah. and Limerick, um, yeah. and I was talking to them, even people from PFI, and they just said to here, Dean, I don't know where that money's going to last and could yeah. come from. And I was thinking, I don't want because even I saw it a couple of years with Monaghan and then whoever else involved, and I was actually thinking, what, imagine being involved with that. I was actually, I'd um, been kind of within Monaghan towards the end of it. I've a good friend of mine was a goalkeeping coach mm. up there, and I remember seeing that every week when they were being paid afterwards. Yeah. And it was maybe 12 lads were being handed envelopes, and then five or six more just didn't seem to be handed one, yeah. and you're kind of going... Yeah, there's something there. not right here and then even meeting their under 19s coach in Poland mm. um, the day that they went out of business and he didn't even know that they had gone out of business yeah. I actually had to tell him that his club and the people he worked for had like, gone out of business there you go like, and I, I even know like the lads all find out through text the today like yeah so like it, 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 it's, it's a shambles even for the chairman to come out and release those sort of statements in the middle of a game it was at half time of the Dundalk class. I mean, like, it just, it's just, it's, what way, it makes no sense even to do it that way. I mean, yeah. there's right ways and wrong ways to do this sort of stuff, and they just, I don't know, it's as if he has never experienced the league before. I don't know what it was. Um, to be honest, it, we all came, when did we, what day was it? Everyone would have found out it was on the Friday. Uh, the Friday when he released the Dundalk game was the Friday. It was Friday and, and then I think the next day the, the PFA tweeted about it. Yeah, he released the statement at half time on the Friday. You're right, PFA. yeah, so I was on the bus home from Drogheda last week. That's when yeah. I would have found out. So straight away I was on to, I texted you last night, Open Bray, and the lads are the same. Yeah. And they, they're all like, oh man, it's heartbreaking to hear. Like, it's literally yeah. devastating. Because at the end of the day, imagine you were told next week, here, look, you're not going to have a job. Yeah. And it's such a specific kind of title where you can't just, it's so unprotected in a way. Yeah, so if the club work. goes bust, there's no way you can like, pay out my contract because you they physically don't have the money. Like, yeah. um, so I don't know. Like, I'm, I'm actually I'm delighted now. I did make that decision. Yeah. Because even if it is now all right for the rest of the season, to go through that in the last couple of weeks is just horrible. Like, and yeah. there's some top players in that like there's team. Like, third for a reason. They're not fluking away to yeah. third. Like, they have a very strong squad. Lads like Gary McCabe and Anto Flood and Aaron Green, yeah. and Mark Salmon, yeah. Buckley. <laughs> Yeah. Like they're full, they're full of lads who we were discussing it when we were talking about the situation and talking about the players who were there and going, the vast majority of these lads are going to get Premier Division clubs if they go yeah. out. Obviously, yeah. the big problem for those players was, and would that, f if you were in that situation, would that be the scariest part of it that you're probably feeling yourself, right, well, I'm good enough to play in the Premier Division, I'm good enough to get another club. Yeah. But that a lot of clubs probably don't have the budget at this point of the season to bring another player in. But I wouldn't even say, it's not even, I wouldn't say the players are worried too much about getting another club, it was more about the logistics. So, say right now, I'm now living in Limerick. Yeah. I would now have to move 
everything back to say I happened to lose the Limerick yeah. and I say I end up signed for Bray, I would now have to move everything back and move kind of my life for the year. Yeah. Like even my girlfriend and stuff who's not based in Dublin either. So yeah. like everything would just be and I think like if you're looking from the outside out, you think ah scrand, he's just walk into another club. But you have to kind of think of the personal life of someone. Especially for, League Someone like I don't know, off the top of my head, um one of the boys that's from Dublin, like Stephen Beatty now is yeah. living in Cork. Say now he would have to up his life and change and move back to Dublin, like. Yeah. Um. So I think it's just it's it's very easy for people just to think of the one side of it where it's purely football based. Yeah. And think obviously these lads are some of them might even have jobs as well. Like I know lads playing with bows all work as well. Well, I know like we know personally know Gary McCabe. Like Gary McCabe's a what Lucaside rep, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. He works for yeah, Lucaside yeah. during the day. So like for you to go and up and move to. Obviously, he's a top player and he'd get another big club, but if he'd up and move to Cork for the rest of the season... Well, obviously, but even like us, we all would yeah. train mornings. So then, like, lads have to sacrifice that sort of thing. So it completely can change lads' lives. And even that sort of situation in the league disrupts the whole league. Because yeah. we are looking at us right, and we've beaten Bray twice this year. Yeah. And teams ahead of us have actually lost to them. So if we say whatever, they went bust, they got knocked out of the league, we lose our six points. Yeah, it was yourselves and Sligo, I think, were the ones who kind of lost them out. Sligo, before... Kind of last week when the table came, when they someone did yeah, up the table, the table well, Sligo yeah. would have been bottom of the table and clearly bottom of the table because of it. And you lads obviously lost your six points, yeah. and you were dropping down closer towards that yeah, yeah. that end of the table. And so it does, it just, it's just a, it's just a shambles the way they did it, and it's just the fact that it is happening, and the club are so naive to come out and say they expected the yeah. yeah to rise. Where it was just like I've been to Bray since I was. 16, 17, you know, like, hey, you, know, you know, Bray, you know the area. Like, yeah, everyone, friends like, yeah, around. like, there's yeah. not that many footballing people in the kind of but uh, I find that out in Cabin yeah. Daily now. Yeah. So I don't know, I don't know where these expectations or these like hopes even came from because I know even Harry Kenny's in the job. I don't know if he would have totally agreed to it either because he's been around a long time and he knows. Yeah. But it seemed to be purely based on the board members or else the chairman seemed to come out and say, look, we thought this is going to happen. Yeah. Okay. <sighs> I, I think it's, it's everyone looking in is just looking at what wow, typical league of, I see something from the outside you're trying to attract yeah. Yeah. so oh, typical league of Ireland yeah, I haven't like whatever yeah. can't get fans can't have got the money like it's just I don't know it's just as, as as fans with players too yeah. yeah and as you say then tip, people from the outside looking in going typical league of Ireland um, yesterday as we speak now Shamrock Rovers under 17's team with a couple of trialists lost 9-0 to Celtic's first team obviously you're a player who's been around the league has yeah. played in these friendlies against English clubs and everything like that for the past few years obviously it brings in a good amount of money for Rovers yesterday but as a player to play in one of them games or to even not be involved in one of them games like most of the Rovers first team where does it actually do anything for you? Because to me, as a fan watching it and as a Rovers fan, I was absolutely embarrassed with the way that Rovers dealt with the entire thing and what they built. A Celtic team who, let's be fair, if Celtic were to lose in the Champions League in a couple of rounds' time and Rovers were to keep winning the Europa League, they could quite conceivably draw each other in the Europa League playoff round. And we were treating, Shamrock Rovers were treating them like they were Real Madrid yesterday. Well, it wasn't at the game, was it? Um... But I just saw the scoreline. It was 4 0 half time, 9 0 full time, was yeah. it? But even uh, I looked at the starting team and I didn't expect the boys to be playing. Yeah. And straight away you think they're going to get hammered because I saw Scott and Claire were starting. Like they had some big names who were on big, big money. Scott Sinclair, like, Mousa Dembele, kind um, of them type of players. I am really actually, like, it was only going to be one way, like, if you are yeah. playing that. And they, as I said, they even had trialists playing Rovers. Yeah. Um, but I think, no, fair, I've played in a few over the years and I think. Someone can be very beneficial on Josh, you know yourself. Like, we've like, done alright though, didn't we? Like, you see, yeah, it's great. <laughs> we used to play, I know, MK Dons, I think we drew with them. Peterborough, we drew with them. Were you there for the infamous Fear Royale game? No, I signed a month later. Actually, yeah, I, I, was at the game, I was at the game, but unfortunately, I don't get the whole, like, few lads still hold that in their yeah. career highlights. Well, probably the highlight of their career, so. Crazy night, though. Uh, <laughs> but no, I think, it's fun. I do think they are beneficial to a certain extent. Yeah. The likes of when Rovers played Liverpool a couple of years and Soledad de Viva. Yeah. Like financially that's a huge benefit to the Rovers, but maybe not for the lads. Like it's a good experience for the lads as well to see the different level. Yeah. But as in terms of looking at the league and kind of making it respectable for like people looking into it, I don't think it is great when you see and they lost nine 0 to a Celtic team. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, just for me kind of looking at it, it was the worst parts about it for me were Rovers were they 
got Celtic to bring over their three trophies from last year and their champions or their European Cup trophy from nineteen sixty seven and they paraded them around the pitch at half time and stuff like that. To me, I don't know what it would be like for you as a player, but as a fan of Rovers and feeling like that Rovers are a historic club and they are a big football club. They're not as bad like they're not as bad as they're not U C D. They're they're a club with a lot of history and a lot of league titles and a lot of FAI Cups and everything like that and European experience and you know, a lot of kind of big European nights. They played Manchester United in the European Cup back in the day. They've got to the group stages of the Europa League not too long ago. And they treated Celtic like they were that Real Madrid team that came over when Benzema and Ronaldo played their first games for mm. Madrid. Would, as a player for you at all, if you were sitting in the stand yesterday, if you were, a Ro- if you were still at Rovers, yeah. would watching that and kind of seeing that, with that subconsciously or consciously in your mind, if you were to get Celtic in the Europa League later on in the summer, would that subconsciously in your mind give you a kind of inferiority complex towards them at that point? Like, I know what you mean. It can be quite... It seems like, I don't know, I wasn't there to see it now, but it's almost you felt a bit disrespected as a fan of yeah. Rovers. Like, um, I don't know, I'd, maybe you would. Like, you're, if, say, obviously it's a long shot, but if Rovers did draw Celtic now in a couple of rounds... Initially, they're thinking we've lost. We're not going to beat these. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um. <sighs> so, I don't know. It's a it's a funny one, isn't it? Because yeah. Celtic's obviously close to home, and it's yeah. Like thing, a lot of people say, who's your sport, Celtic? Yeah. And like, oh, what Irish team do you support? And a lot of people say, oh, Rovers. Yeah. So it's it's kind of straight away people have bridged that gap between local, like, I'm oh, sorry, um, like Irish football, and then. A real team you support, which I always hated. Yeah. And I know my brother as well. My brother's very Irish supporting team, like football, uh, football based, like. And uh, it is very like frustrating as obviously as a fan, as a player, when you see someone that bridge that gap completely. And like looking at Celtic last year in the Europa League qualifiers, I, I know obviously they finished the season great, but they seem to struggle in those qualifiers. Then that should have like they lost to Lincoln Red Imps at home, yeah. which is they are a. I know of one of their players and that's only because I'm a Portsmouth fan as well Yeah, and he played for Portsmouth for a year and he wasn't any good and he was man of the match that night against Celtic and you're kind of looking at it going a year on from that just because they won three three trophies in a league that for me Celtic aside maybe any team in the League of Ireland Premier Division could go into that and finish in the top three yeah, judging by there's all safe holiday. like the like St Johnston losing Rangers obviously losing to a bunch of bin men from Luxembourg like So like, I don't know, it's it is it is hugely disrespectful as I said, but I know it makes money. It's a for good the club. PR, like yeah. at the end of the day it's well run PR PR programme from Rovers like and yeah. they do I think better than any other team in the league in terms of getting teams over and attracting teams for friendlies obviously because they claim themselves as the biggest team in Ireland. Yeah, like Bur- they've Burnley next week and stuff like that. But I can well. understand your point as obviously as a Rovers fan and looking yeah. at that and then kind of belittling your own club while at a home game, while yeah. based, you know what I mean? Look, if they hadn't done that and it hadn't have been, if they had organised it on a week where Rovers didn't have a Europa League game, yeah. where Rovers had been knocked out on Thursday or whatever, and the first team played, I think it's probably a different story then because it's probably a much tighter game. Yeah. But I think it's just... I don't know a lot of Rovers fans I've spoken to in the last day or so have felt the same about it that it was a combination of how Celtic were tre- treated by the club and then the fact of the result in the game itself where Rovers just obviously didn't turn up and there was guys who were playing games who co- have come from local clubs around mm-hmm. Halle and stuff yeah. like Dan Carpenter and stuff who aren't League of Ireland players don't have any experience in League of Ireland too yeah they're getting an opportunity and stuff like that but he's probably never going to play in the League of Ireland again because he's come in and the one opportunity he's got is against international footballers <laughs> when he's playing against lads that he's probably trained with once. How would Celtic feel? <sighs> uh... Would Brendan Rodgers be disappointed? I think he'd be disappointed about the challenge that yeah. Rovers kind of posed them. I think they would have expected when they were coming over or when the friendly was okay. originally announced that they'd be playing a Rovers kind of a strong Rovers side. To give them a good game before they mm-hmm. go up to Linfield next Friday. But to be honest, I think they're going up to Linfield next Friday and it doesn't matter what football is played there. It's it's all going to be about the atmosphere and how those Celtic players deal with that next Friday more than I think the football on the pitch. Yeah. Um, 
but before I kind of continue to rant on more about this because I'll end up talking about it for the next three days, yeah, yeah, three days. Yeah. no um, and I won't be happy about the Bernie one next week as well but Bernie don't have any trophies to parade around so they just have a few Irish lads um, but it'll be the same again apparently it's going to be a Rovers 17s 19s and yeah. trialists like because okay. we've it's in between the two Mlada Boleslav games so obviously they're not going to risk any of the Rovers players in those games but um, we'll move on then to the last point and Josh I'll go to you first on this and we have to be really careful about mentioning names and stuff like that but at Lowen, and the statement that was released on Friday or yeah. sorry yesterday actually about that loan and the fact that they have been found in breach of three different FAI rules in regards to match fixing and manipulation of results for you as someone in, who is a part of the kind of staff in a club in the same league as Atlan, would the only would the only solution for you now be that Atlan should just be thrown out of the league because they've completely brought the league and the game in this country into disrepute? In a small way, it's kind of it's kind of similar to the Bray thing where it causes embarrassment. Yeah. This time, it's 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 a couple of individuals within a club and maybe a lot. Maybe seventy five percent of the club didn't know that this was going on, and that's the thing. You have to feel sorry for them that it, they're looking at a case where it could be. Oh, I was at I was at Adelaide when that happened, and now my career might be tarnished over it. You know what I mean? Yeah. But again, from the league and a collective point of view, it's it's really disappointing, and again, really really embarrassing. Do I think they should be thrown out of the league? If if the FAI want to paint a brighter picture, yeah, I think so. I think I think they have to be. Then what do you feel on it? To be honest, I only know as much as obviously everyone else can yeah. read about it because I actually it's one of the only clubs I don't actually know anyone at the club to even ask about it. Um, and that long, obviously it's Roddy's gone in there now. He's obviously yeah. changed whatever was happening. But like obviously know from what you guys know, that I was taken over by a bunch. Of, was a board, whatever it was, was it? Yeah. And they brought in their own players that no one had ever heard of. Yeah. And obviously they got a great result the first game of the season. So everyone's thinking, oh, they must be all right. And then obviously that. It all went down. It all went there. down from then, and they obviously started doing what they were doing. Um, but it was only first hand. The only time I saw them play, I went to watch them against UCD this year. Yeah. And I think it was five minutes into the game, and the keeper, who was obviously suspect to a huge one, obviously from the videos yeah. of the free kick yeah. one there, and he let in a goal, and I remember thinking he is brutal. Yeah. And five minutes later, he was making worldly saves, yeah. and he looked top yeah. keeper, and I was like, what is going on here? But I was similar to our game against Cavendish. I don't want to mention names or yeah. anything, but it was. But I was completely straight. naive to it and I was just thinking, Geez, what is going on? And I actually said to one of my mates jokingly, I dare thrown this. Yeah. yeah, now I remember being at the game. Man. Yeah, and I just remember, like, and I think he did something then similar in the last 10 minutes yeah. where Georgie, was it Georgie Point scored the second goal? Georgie Kelly. George, George Kelly, Kelly, sorry, yeah. George Point. Um, yeah. George Kelly ran a goal and the centre half just stepped up and it was it's bizarre yeah, to very see. Strange. And the keeper, he went on one with the keeper and the keeper just threw yeah. an arm at it. Yeah. And it was just, not that they'd thrown the game in the way I was thinking, but I was thinking they either don't give a shit or else yeah. what's going on? Here? What's going on? Like yeah. it was actually bizarre and obviously used to the obviously when you're playing as a team and you when you're playing as a team and someone does a mistake, you don't think that they did it on purpose. You're thinking, Oh thank God, yeah, I, I benefit yeah. from And I'm probably gonna target him again now because he's kinda of, maybe his head's gone a little bit. Yeah, it's just little things like that. Like if you're a player yeah. you get the better someone, you're not gonna think Oh, it's because he doesn't want to get on. Think, oh yeah, yeah. it's because oh, I did great. Like, yeah. like uh, even Gary, I think Gary O'Neill scored the first goal. He must think, oh yeah, that was a good shot for me. Yeah. But like, maybe it was, and maybe the keeper did mean to. But I remember just watching that, and I think that's something. like I just no, I never even thought of it that extent because I yeah. just wouldn't think that would go on. Yeah. Um. But as far as like going on about kicking around the league and stuff, I really don't know. I can't comment on that because I don't know. Yeah. Once again, like as I said, that disrupts the whole first division now. Yeah. And I know then there's a young lad now I'd, that's going to Actually, I think kind of saying kicking them out of the league might be a bit harsh in terms of straight away. But if the same people are in charge of that club going forward into next season, I would really, really feel myself that they should look at the licence. They, ha- they have to. With, with that loan. Yeah. Because they've nearly gone out of business yeah. a couple of times in the last couple of years. I know full well from also being at Atlanta at the same time as Monaghan, yeah, I've kind of followed Roddy a little mm. bit at times. Um, but that they have had continuous financial problems. Yeah. And they were a club who the FAI have had to bail them out. They had the fixture against Longford that they were not fulfilling and everything yeah. like that. It's, they're a club with, I think this might just be the icing on the cake in terms yeah. of 
at loan. If the FAI really do care about this league, and I do question that um, mm. quite greatly, I think at loan need to be refused a license next year. Yeah. Um, the following year, yeah, possibly bring them back in then if they've learned their lesson and everything like that. But the FAI need to at some point make an example of of a club and they have to stop this happening. Yeah, I think like across the board this year, obviously two major issues have been at Lone and Bright. And I yeah. think if if there's something serious wrong, if the FAI don't clap on it, look, look, we seriously have to be more thorough on every point you need to get to get that license across the board. I don't care if it's at Lone, Bray, Shamrock Rovers, Sligo Rovers, Dundalk. They have to, yeah, like they have, anything. They have mm. to be more thorough across the board. I think Dean cares if it's Limerick, though. Happy <laughs> Limerick. For now, yeah. yeah. Um, right, we're going to leave it there then. Um, Dean, thank you so much for coming in. Oh, hopefully, we'll, hopefully we'll get you in again and best of luck for the rest of the season as well. Cheers, um, Josh, cheers for coming in. No uh, we will talk to you again soon. Make sure to like, share and subscribe down below. And,